Welcome to Coffee with Joe for Monday, November 15th, 2010. Joe? Salud. Joe, let's talk a little bit about the international scene. The G20 met last week in South Korea, and uh, the headlines that came out of that were kind of non-headlines. Um, there were, apparently was quite a bit of squabbling. The uh, European countries went off on their own for a little while to discuss uh, the Ireland debt problem. And uh, they came back and pretty much said um, that they'd be making more concrete suggestions after the winter meeting. Seems to be they tabled a lot of their decisions for the winter meeting. Now, Obama had a statement on this. Uh, He said, uh, the work that we do here is not always going to seem dramatic. It's not always going to be immediately world-changing. But step by step, what we're doing is building stronger international mechanisms and institutions that will help stabilize the economy, ensure economic growth, and reduce some tensions. Joe? Well, you know, Pete, on the one hand, you know, those of us who are somewhat concerned about uh, global monetary, uh, you know, policy, um, you know, maybe should be happy about the fact that the, the G20s uh, and the IMF, you know, you know, in particular, is not able to present anything forward for the G20 to adopt because of what that might be, you know. Um, but on the other hand, you know what it really says. Every time these guys get together, it's it's maybe for another quarter, Pete, or maybe for another four months or so, is to just keep kicking the can down the road. You know, we're meeting, we're working on the on the solving the problem. We're we're we, we're going to come up with a solution, you know, have confidence. And really the whole purpose of all of that is to have some co- uh, confidence be available to the financial markets so, so that they can, you know, continue to function until we get together again. So there wasn't really much there in that, in that regard, Pete. This, this uh, would be the Dale Carnegie approach to international economic policy? That's, that's the name of the game there, Pete. It is <laughs> the Dale Carnegie. It's to make sure it looks like you really know how to do this dance, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and, and maybe that will make somebody, uh, you know, a happier partner with you. But really, Pete, <clears throat> you, know, uh, you know, what it really says is that there is no solution, you know, it, that is to say, the only thing they could really agree on in the beginning was that they really need to agree on something. And now, you know, it's quite a ways, you know, down the pike here from when we had the real, you know, crash that instigated the formation of the G20 with certain monetary uh, powers. That is to say, let's, we're, let's all get together and agree that we're going to come up with a, with a monetary solution. And their monetary solution, a lot of it is, is, is not monetary at all, Pete. It's about fiscal, you know, consolidation uh, being the watchword. So, so their... Fiscal consolidation being austerity? Yeah, fiscal and- consolidation be, be really, really reflecting austerity, uh, uh, sometimes manifesting itself, Pete, in uh, limitations on the ability of economies to grow through issue, issuing public debt. That's a big part of it, Pete, okay? Limiting the ability of governments to borrow. And okay? this, this is reminiscent of the IMF's fiscal space concept as Absolute. well. Yeah, it's, it's, you can see it's uh, part and parcel of the same thing, Pete. You know, basically, basically, you know, we talked uh, last week about, you know, one, you know, the first method you know, being expanding, you know, debt. Really, we talk about expanding money, but it's expanding debt, expanding the economy by expanding debt. Now, what is really the method two with the austere, the austerian me- method? It is really the con, the, you know, the, the contraction of, of the issuing of the debt. Okay, uh, there's a focus on the government issuing debt, but. The cause of the government issuing debt is the lack of willingness of private businesses and persons to uh, uh, issue debt, basically, Pete. Okay, or actually, the, that the fact that the private sector has actually been paying down debt. Yeah, so the that, reduction of the debt, if you're going to have economic activity, if all money is debt, then that activity has to come from the government. And if there's going to be no government debt issued, that's telling you there's going to be no economic activity. You know, that, that's basically what it's, what it's telling you. So the austerian solution, okay, 
is the only one they can think of because of their paradigm of debt money, Pete. Okay? So they're limited to that way of thinking. But when you take that to its ultimate conclusion, and, and you, when you get to the IM, talk of the IMF's solution of fiscal space, limiting the ability of governments to borrow, Pete, that, once that can become uh, put into a, an agreement that's signed off on by the government, we, the people of the United States of America, have really lost the sovereignty that we gained in having an American Revolution, Pete. And when I say American Revolution, what I really mean is a, 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 the war of independence, our ability to have an independent financial, monetary, governmental system from that of Great Britain at the time. Just so happens it was Great Britain at the time. But our, our uh, sovereignty, you know, uh, it, that we established at that time is what is in danger of, the, of us of us losing. That's what we're in danger of losing. And how? It's, it seems like a bit, of, a bit of irony, really, in the, in the president's statement there, Pete, you know. Well, don't look for big things to happen here, you know, like as if, you know, the IMF, uh, you know, proposing to the G20 that in order to do this, we have to uh, arrive at a standard by which governments can issue debts. I mean, that's basically putting the whole world on the monet the European Monetary Union method, Pete, okay? And look how that's working out without governments having the ability to issue their own debts. Well, so, Por Portugal is talking about bailing just uh, right after the G20 meeting, right? Exactly. The financial it, minister it, of Portugal was talking about bailing because exactly. he needs his, his monetary sovereignty back, right? Well, yeah, I think there's a certain recognition among some countries, Pete, you know, that, you know, the economists of, of some countries that, in fact, uh, having the solution imposed on them by, in their case, the European Monetary Union uh, uh, is, is, is in, unacceptable. It's really unacceptable. Uh, people don't realize what they gave up when they gave up their monetary uh, sovereignty to the, to the European Monetary Union. But now it's coming home to roost. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the whole kicking the can down the road thing, Pete, you remember it wasn't that many months ago we were talking about Greece and Ireland, you know? No, they kicked the can down the road. They created some hundreds of billions of dollars of something. Nobody really knows what it is, but it's some kind of a commitment. Uh, and that keeps the can, you know, rolling down the road. But here we are, you know, at that much time later. And what's the solution? You know, what's the solution? Uh, as far as austerity goes, you have the you have the fact that you know Great Britain, or you know, the, the UK has has uh, put in an austerity measure plan and submitted it to the IMF so that the IMF could evaluate it with a view towards. Um, well, they don't really, you know, give them a rating, but they do uh, evaluate their monetary policy. They do that, Pete, part of their functions, okay? And, uh, and when they looked at it, they said, you know, Pete, the IMF, in a way you could say they're doing the best they can given the paradigms they're working in because they're not working in the third way, Pete. But looking at it from that perspective, they're really saying, on the one hand, on the other hand, because they want them to have these austerity measures to limit government borrowing. And on the other hand, they're saying, if that, if that austerity limits economic growth, then you need to look at reducing the austerity, uh, reducing taxes, and, and in fact, having bigger deficits. Running bigger deficits, having monetary, policy, having monetary policy actions, which have to include quantitative easing. So there's no direction Pete, because they're tied to the to the expansion and contraction of debt money, and until the and the International Monetary Fund and others can open up to the way of having countries issue its own national money for its own national economy without issuing debt, we'll never have uh, their you know them having anything relating to sound, stable money. Pete, we will be. Continue. And for us, we have to worry about that because if they ever do adopt those debt limits, then, you know, where does that leave us as a country? If the G20 adopts it, of course, we would have to approve it with our Congress. But, you know, Pete, it worries me about the idea about 
about you know the conservativeness of our of our uh, of our fiscal policies these days when people like Obama you know who is you know claimed to be a socialist is basically having the same policies for for money and, and fiscal space as George W Bush you know Pete it's like well then where's that all going to end are the uh, are the tea party is willing to give up our national sovereignty in order to have a you know a small uh, you know the the small government that they want those are the kind of issues I see that are floating around out there, Pete. We're about out of time there, Joe. We're going to have to leave it there for this week. More, more down the road. All right, buddy. Okay. See you, Joe. Take care.